What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I am bringing you my first place Dino Morphia deck that I managed to get first place with today at Locals. It was my first time playing the deck at Locals and it managed to do like really well. I was super impressed with the deck overall and yeah I just want to share my deck list and sort of how I felt about the deck and you know if you want to know how to play this deck stay tuned till the end of the video. I will be showing you sort of how to play this deck and how this list sort of works so if that does interest you stay until the end of this video also before we get into this profile if you are looking for like a Yu-Gi-Oh community where you can hang out with other people maybe play master duel and just have a good time we do have our discord down below if you guys want to check that out it's you know a growing Yu-Gi-Oh community where again you can just hang out with other Yu-Gi-Oh players and have a good time so yeah discord link down below and if you do like the Dino Morphia strategy we will have future content on this deck and of course Dimension Force will come out eventually giving this deck more support and we'll do another deck profile then so if that does sound interesting to you you want to stay tuned please leave a like subscribe and without further ado let's get into this Dino Morphia deck profile all right, so starting off, we do have our three Dino Morphia Theresia. The Dino Morphia deck essentially has two main deck monsters that are pivotal to the deck strategy overall. You have to be maxing them out. And Theresia is one of them. So on summon, she sets a Dino Morphia from, or like a Dino Morphia trap from your deck. And this is really good for getting like very specific key traps you need. And of course, she's just like a plus one in that sense, allowing you get an extra trap card. Uh, and all the Dino Morphia monsters have an effect when they're destroyed by battle or card effects. Uh, you, for Theresia and the other main deck monster, you can banish a trap in your graveyard to special summon another level 4 lower Dino Morphia monster from your graveyard, except themselves. So, this is really good for, like, floating. It provides just, like, a really good engine um, that can, you know, just keep plussing and replacing itself. And it's, it's actually pretty powerful and... Theresia is just really good at getting your plus one, your trap, and then being able to float into another Dino Morphia. And the other Dino Morphia that is the, you know, the main deck monster we play is three Diplo. So this one on summon sends a Dino Morphia card from your deck to your graveyard, which is actually really important because a lot of your effects require to like banish very specific traps in your grave to do things. Uh, oftentimes Diplos will end up sending Theresia for me in, in like different hands. Uh, so that he can flow into her or use one of your trap cards to get like her from the graveyard and use her effect So they work together very well uh, And they both have additional effects So this one sets a card this one sends a card from deck to grave But if you activate their effects uh, when you have 2,000 or less life points uh, They get additional bonuses so Diplos will actually burn the opponent 500 damage and Theresia will gain 500 attack making her 2k But yeah, just three Diplos and three Theresia to round up your main deck, Dino Morphia monsters. All right, next up, I was trying a little tech today. I was playing one Flower Dino. So this card is interesting. It's a TCG exclusive um, that came out of Battle of Chaos, and it was definitely designed to be played with the Dino Morphia deck. Um, it's really interesting. So if your opponent activates a spell or you activate a trap, you can special summon this card from your hand, and that's the only way to actually summon it. It can't be summoned uh, any other way. And then when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target three banished spell or trap cards. Like, specifically three, it can't be up to three. Put them on the bottom of the deck in any order and draw a card. So, the deck sort of banishes a lot of traps. So, in the grind game, this card can come up. And it's also searchable off Fossil Dig. And it's an extender to either make rank fours or just have a giant 2k body on board. But I always had this at, like, super awkward times today where, like, I'd either draw it early game and it was okay and... And then other games I would just win so fast that I didn't even need it. So I don't know if I'd play this in the future, but I was running one today. So it's going to be in the profile. One Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Uh, this is actually the last dinosaur monster in this list. There are some lists that go much more heavy dinosaur focused and run like uh, Miscellaneousaurus and Overraptors and maybe even Lost Worlds. I was playing a smaller sort of dino engine uh, and more traps and just like generic good cards in this list. So only one Tyranno. This guy is an absolute beast. You dump a lot of your monsters to graveyard because of one of your main trap cards. So if you're able to just drop this giant boss monster, he is such a game ending card, absolutely ridiculous. So this is a card I want to have at least one of in the deck just as an option if it happens to arise. It's, it's just such a powerful boss monster. So we are playing one Tyranno. Lastly for monsters, we have three Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Again, we're playing this definitely more trap heavy than dino focused. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a trap based archetype and Lord of the Heavenly Prison is such a ridiculous card protecting all your back row from like spell and trap destruction, as well as just providing another huge body on board. 
um, and getting like whatever trap you need. So I have this set domain like a lot today, uh, rather than like consistency spells, which is something I do in a lot of other trap decks. But in this one specifically, I was setting my trap so I could activate them. And he was super clutch all day. I wanted to play three because he's very, very good. I think you can cut this down to two uh, to play something else, but that's just something more testing will sort of lead to. Starting with the spells, we do have the three pot of prosperity. So I think as far as like pot cards go, I don't think extravagance is going to be like super good in this deck as far as like options you could play over this. I think prosperity is just the way to go because you don't want to end up banishing like any of your fusions to be honest. I went through multiple and like multiple different situations like banishing too many Kentraginas is like very, very bad. Um, but yeah, this card was super amazing for just making sure you see a monster first turn or getting a very specific trap. Uh, as far as budget options, you could play Extravagance. I'm not sure it's like the best option, but you could also just like run very good trap cards over this or throw in a more heavy dino package with maybe like another Tyranno and like a, just any other good cards you have for consistency. Uh, but I'm on three pot of prosperity. Two Fossil Digs. So this card is essentially just another copy of Theresia or Diplos, whichever one you need. Most of the time it was just Theresia because she's sort of the best one. Uh, it can also add Flower Dino, which is another reason I wanted to play Flower Dino. It's another target off of this card. If the game state sort of calls for him over just any other um, Dino Morphia monster, because you run through your main deck Dino Morphia monsters fast. Like, oftentimes, turn two or turn three, they were all in Grave. Like, you go through them very quickly. So, Fossil Dig, I definitely do not want to play three of this. Even at two, I feel like I was seeing this card too much oftentimes. Um, but yeah, if you don't draw a Dino Morphia monster, the game can go very south very quick. So two Fossil Dig was just a nice way to get our uh, Dino monsters to hand. And with the three Prosperity, we had just a very high chance of seeing a Dino monster first turn. And that actually wraps it up for the main deck spells. On two traps, we have probably one of the most important traps in the deck, the three Dino Morphia domain. So this is your really only way to fusion summon in this deck currently until Dimension Force, where we get the other trap as well. Uh, this one during the main phase, you can uh, just pay half your life points. All the Dynamorphia traps pay half your life points because that's sort of how the deck works. Uh, and then you can fusion summon a Dynamorphia fusion monster from your extra deck by sending materials from your hand, field, or deck. So it just fuses from deck for free, which is very nice. It puts both your monsters in grave, which is good because they rotate into each other. So you want to have your grave set up. Uh, and then, yeah, so the way the Dynamorphia traps work all the normal trap cards protect you from effect damage if your life points are 2000 or lower and all the counter trap cards prevent you from taking battle damage uh, when your life points are 2000 or lower and you do this by banishing them from your graveyard and this really helps mitigate the fact that you're putting yourself at like such low life points because if the trap cards didn't have this additional effect in grave then you could just like be playing your game and your opponent could activate sparks and you could lose so it is very nice that the trap cards have this effect. It's very, very relevant and very important. Um, and you have to be careful what like trap cards you're banishing and what situations, sort of because your life points get so low. But um, yeah, that's how Dynamorphia trap cards essentially work. And Domain is definitely one you want to play at three. Two, Dynamorphia Alert. Uh, this card is really good because it just helps you just put so many monsters on board so quickly. Uh, it can special summon up to two Dynamorphia monsters from your graveyard. That whose level is equal up to eight so you can either special summon both of the main deck ones or like one of your fusion monsters uh this card is insane i'd probably go up to three of this after testing i was on two because i, I like if you don't see a dinomorphia monster this card's sort of a brick but uh no it's a 100 a brick if you don't see a dinomorphia monster but yeah this card was absolutely bonkers it just helps you with so much follow-up and always having field presence is really good in this deck because you are floating into your other monsters and yeah this card was insane i, I think i'm going to test three of this but uh for this event we played two two dinomorphia brute this is one of like the best interrupts for the deck because the normal traps are especially good because Kentragena can banish these from your graveyard to get their effects as her effect and brute's one of the best ones because you destroy one of your Dynamorphia monsters to destroy one card your opponent controls. So just like a really good pop that interrupts your opponent. And destroying your Dynamorphia monsters is oftentimes free because they'll just float into the other one and then proc that effect. And it can snowball very, very quickly in that aspect. Now, of course, you know, all these do have the downside of paying half your life points, but that just makes your Kentragena bigger. So it is like a Raigeki break that costs half your life points, but procs your effects. So yeah, two Dynamorphia Brute. I think this number is fine. I think two is like where I want to be at with this card. Uh, yeah, super, super good. 
Next up, two Sonic to start off our Counter Trap Dinomorphia cards. So Sonic is really great in this deck for a couple reasons. Uh, if you control a Dinomorphia monster, you can activate this card. Uh, when your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can negate the activation and destroy it. So it's just a counter trap that negates spell and trap cards. What's really good about that in a trap deck is it means like unlike Eldritch or other skill drain type decks, um, or just any trap deck in general, this deck can just simply like summon a Theresia. Uh, and then you set like a Sonic and that already insulates you from like Harpy's Feather Duster or Evenly Match, uh, anything like that. So having like a searchable way that isn't like Solemn Judgment to stop things like Evenly or Harpy's Feather Duster is actually super, super powerful. And it came up today once or twice where my opponent just couldn't blow up my back row because of Sonic. So yeah, this counter trap's super good. And I think I'll be going up to three of this one because it's just like a really good negate. Um, but two, there's a card, the next card I'm showing, I think I actually want to, uh, cut a copy, so it might go out for a third Sonic. Uh, the other thing to note about this card is that actually, after resolution, it pops one of your Dinomorphia monsters, which, you know, it's fine, again, because all the Dinomorphias will flow into themselves, so that is pretty nice. Alright, so then we have the two reversion. Uh, this card I actually think I want to go down to one. Uh, originally this card seemed like super powerful to me because the fact that it could copy any counter trap in my grave is amazing because that's very very powerful but the downside comes in where you have to control a dinomorphia fusion monster specifically to activate this card which means you have to be like really ahead in the game or at least have seen your plays right like you need to have resolved domain for this card to even be live and then you need a counter trap in your graveyard for this card to do something I think this is more of like a nice one of that can copy like judgments or whatever counter traps are in your grave at the time, but not something you really want to see in your opening, especially. Uh, so I think for me, this is now going to be a one of, but uh, it did come up to copy a solemn judgment today. So that was nice. This card's really good. You do need to make sure that you keep up your counter trap like lineup. Uh, and why I'm probably going to be taking one of these out for a third Sonic is because you need counter traps because they're the ones that stop the battle damage should you get too low. So yeah, maybe one reversion and three Sonics, how I'm going to go, but we were playing two reversion today. Next up, we have the three judgment and the three strike, just some more counter traps. Again, paying your life points is sort of what this deck wants to do. So there was almost no downside there. Uh, and these are just very, very powerful. Maining judgment, of course, judgment's more of a go first card, but in this deck, it just fits the strategy like too well. Uh, and I often kept this card in, even going second, so yeah, Solemn Judgment was just like super, super good, uh, and Strike, of course, is one of the most powerful traps in the game altogether, so these are your six additional counter traps, I'm not playing any like Solemn Warnings that I've seen some people on, um, just the six Solemns here. Three, Torrential Tribute, this is just one of the best traps in the game altogether, and this deck it's even better because uh, your Dinomorphia cards don't have to be destroyed by your opponent, they can be destroyed by your own card effects, so you Torrential your board and you just go like plus a billion off of it, so very very nice, and of course three Torrential in any trap deck is going to be staple. Two, Ice Dragon's Prison, this card is just generically one of the best traps in the game. Uh, normally in like other trap decks you could play Punishment, but in this deck you actually need your extra deck very badly, so just the Ice Dragon's Prisons, no Punishment, so these are just like our most generic like good trap card. And then lastly we were on to Skill Drain, and Skill Drain is absolutely crazy in this deck. Uh, I'm only on two, I only own two, but thinking about it, I don't know if I'd go up to three. This card was insane every time I saw it for sure, and maybe that's a reason to go up to three. Um, but like this isn't just a skill drain deck like it, it does so much more than play under skill drain like it, it your, your deck's extremely good under skill drain because your fusion is 4,000 attack which is just massive and all your grave effects work under skill drain but you really want to also be snowballing with your like diplos and theresia effect that just keep activating and getting you free cards so losing that kind of stinks and losing kentrogena's effect to be like a way to interrupt stuff also just isn't that great uh, plus, I don't want to see like multiples of this opening hand, but yeah, there's no denying skill drains absolutely broken. Maybe playing three is the right way, but again, I only own two, so I was only on two today. This card 
should just never have come back to three and that's just how that is but yeah we were on two skill drain all right on to the extra deck and i just want to say before we go into this this extra deck is whack so I, I went over some like changes i want to do with the main deck because you know this is really my first time playing the deck in a competitive setting uh so it was like the best testing i've had with the deck altogether. and let me know what changes i want to make but this extra deck was kind of fake going into the tournament so there's a lot of different changes you could make with this extra deck because it is definitely not optimized at all. So I'm going to run over what I played and then tell you what probably you should add into it. So the main card is the three Kentraginas. You want to be maxing this because she is your main fusion until Dimension Force. I mean, even past Dimension Force, she's pretty much your main fusion. Um, but yeah, this card's insane. Uh, she loses attack equal to your life points, which is another reason you want to be losing life points is so that she just keeps getting bigger. Uh, she can banish, or quick effect, she can banish a normal trap in your graveyard, a normal Dynamorphia trap, and then her effect becomes that trap, which is just like super good to copy Brute and then get your Interrupt or copy Domain and get another Fusion Summon. Uh, and then she has the same effect as the other Dynamorphias, except she doesn't have to banish a trap card. So when she's destroyed by a battle or card effect, uh, you can just special summon a level 4 or lower Dynamorphia monster from your graveyard. So super good to make sure the engine always keeps rolling. Uh, and then we also had the two, uh, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna say that. I've never tried to say his name. I actually didn't make this all day, but this card's like really good in some game states. Uh, it can like burn your opponent when they activate effects, but the most notable thing in my opinion, uh, is that you don't have to pay life points to activate trap cards. So that's pretty good. It means you can activate Solemn Strike when your life points are like at five. So that's pretty cool. And then of course it has the grave effect to bring back a Dynamorphia. And those are all the Dynamorphia fusions. Um, just going over the generic stuff really briefly, we have the one Exiton, the one Baguska, the one Vespinato, uh, we have the Chocanine, the Borbo, uh, and of course playing those means we are on the Zeus because we can make Xyz. So there is something very big about this Xyz lineup that should be changed and that's that Lagia and Dolka are not in here. I could not find mine so I didn't play them but it just never came up. Oftentimes when I could make Lagia or Dolka just leaving my Dinomorphia monsters on the field was better because they're gonna float while if they were overlaid into dog Lagia or Dolka they would just let you know lose their floating capabilities and uh yeah I mean of course you should be playing Lagia and Dolka because they're amazing cards and that is definitely an addition you should make but yeah again this extra deck was not optimized at all. And then we were also playing Dark, Nightmare Phoenix, Unicorn, Access Code, and uh, Boral Sword. Like, none of these ever came up. Again, the only thing I ever made in my extra deck was the Fusion Monsters. That's, that's all I made all day. Uh, nothing else came up. Only the Fusion Monsters came up. So, the extra deck, you kind of have some wiggle room, and you can do what you want with it. But I do think playing Lagia and Dolka is definitely recommended. Um, I also think this dark package, like dark unicorn and access code should be in here no matter what either, but the Phoenix and Boral Sword are up to your own preference, what you want to play there. Uh, but yeah, that does it for the extra and the main deck and it for the deck profile. Now I will be showing a test hand and sort of how to play this deck. So if that's what you are looking forward to, you know, stay tuned and without further ado, let's get into the hand test section. All right. So this is sort of the hand test section of the video where I'm going to show you guys a hand with the deck and sort of how the deck uh, plays and over the course of a couple turns. There's no like combo, so it's not gonna be like a combo video, but we're gonna draw a hand and hope that it is, you know, sort of ideal for what the deck wants to do. Cause it is more of a snowball like deck, but surprisingly it was just putting up some massive boards today that were just very quickly OTKing my opponents. Like I thought I was gonna end up going into time several times today, but it didn't happen once. Like I finished all of my games with like 20 minutes left on the clock and they were just over relatively quickly so yeah we're gonna draw a hand here and see what we have going on uh starting off with our not six but five cards and to start off we have the flower dino again i was just drawing this in the most random time so the one reversion the solemn judgment the domain and the lord of the heavenly prison so this hand's weird but it definitely works so going first very easy you would just set three you're not going to be able to activate the flower dino first turn which is again why i'm thinking about cutting it but we're going to set these three cards to the board and these three cards are very interesting 
I mentioned reversion was only good if you have a way to get your fusion monster out, and we do in the form of domain. So it's going to be pretty good, and we're going to activate our Lord of the Heavenly Prison as well. So then your opponent's going to go and they're going to go into main phase eventually, and you're going to activate your domain. I'll, I'll set these traps so we can sort of activate cards. You're going to activate your domain, and assuming it goes off, you have a couple things you can do here. Uh, you can actually, at resolution, also activate your flower dino, which is cool, but, um, you know, we'll do that after domain goes off. So we're going to activate domain, paying half our life points, and that's going to send Theresia and Diplos from our deck to the graveyard. Uh, and that's very good, because the second you get both of these engraved, they will just constantly loop into each other, as long as you have trap cards. And then we're going to special summon our Kentragena. And Kentragena, of course, right now is zero attack, actually, but she will definitely... Uh, you know, be a little bigger than that as time goes on. We're not going to special our Lords yet, there's no reason, but we can special our Flower Dino. Um, if he dies, he's not going to send anything back, but he is a giant 2000 body. We kind of just want out of our hands. Um, so what we can do at this point is Kentragena will also be able to activate and banish the Domain to activate it again. So we could activate our Kentragena here, banishing Domain, and you could special summon um, the uh pterodon thing here as well uh I, I didn't do that all day but it's something you can do because you have solemn judgment and you have this honestly it's not something i want to do because i almost want to pay life points at this point to make my kentrogena bigger Let, let's see if this thing is optional uh you do not pay no so like if you have this on the field you just are not allowed to pay life points uh at all so we're going to do that though we're going to kentrogena for this guy and at this point kentrogena is going to be at 2000 attack if your opponent does anything, you know, anything threatening, you Solemn Judgment it, and we don't have to pay life points because we are at 2,000 life points currently. Um, so we use the Judgment. And then if they do anything else, we can Revision, Reversion, excuse me, Banish the Judgment, and then this card's effect is Solemn Judgment. So that is, we had two Solemn Judgments and two Fusion Summons on our opponent's turn, and then Lord comes out. Uh, and of course you get to set another Spell or Trap. Whatever you think it needs to be. It is something you need to be able to get rid of quickly. So like either an Ice Dragon's Prison uh, that you can activate on that turn. Or another Domain um, so that you can uh, Fusion Summon again next turn and make another Kentragena. And then you have two big beat sticks. You can also get a follow, uh, like a Fossil Dig or something. Um, but let's just say we set the Domain. Um, yeah. Now, another thing that happens, because we only had two interrupts in the form of Solemn Judgments. Now, Solemn Judgment is a crazy interrupt because it can stop just... Being able to stop summons entirely is, like, much more impactful than maybe, like, imperming something, right? Uh, it's, it's just very, very good. But let's say your opponent breaks through this, right? We only have two banished spells or traps, which stinks because it means if Flower Dino dies, you get nothing. You don't get the draw, um, which stinks, but again, that's how it is. But, you know, if this if this Petite Pterodon dies, that's not his name, but that's what we're calling him, or Kentragena dies, they, of course, special summon your Theresia, which will then set a Dynamorphia spell or trap from your deck, and your Diplos, which, again, will send one from your deck to the grave, which you could banish for other effects. You would have your domain for next turn, a search off this, uh, and, yeah, you can see how it just snowballs and steamrolls, and that hand wasn't even good. Like, that was just a regular hand. I'll do, like, one more test hand, uh, to see if we can get a better hand, but I won't play it out. But yeah, even with that very strange hand where we open Dino, uh, like the Flower Dino is definitely something you want to see later. All right, so just one more test hand here to finish off this video. If you did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe, uh, you know, comment what your favorite part of Dino Morphia maybe is or what you're doing with the deck. Um, and like what strategies you're trying out with it, maybe tech cards you have, or I know some people are playing like Hope for Escape and some other draw cards, but uh, I'm currently not on those. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment. And without further ado, let's get into this final test hand to show you guys the power of Dinomorphia. This hand is garbage. <laughs> actually, it definitely is a very good hand. I just didn't open. N none of these hands actually opened with one of our starters. However, this hand's actually insane. So... What you would do is set four and of course we drew another like brick s card we're going to set these four uh and then our opponent goes and what's really good about this setup is we have domain uh which again brings out our kentragena and then we have the alert which can special summon the theresia and the diplos in our graveyard to get their effects as well uh and then we have like torrential and sonic of course there's a good chance you'd let your opponent play 
uh, and then your, your torrential first, and then do all of your plays. Um, or you could like chain link one domain, uh, chain link two torrential, have that happen, and then your thing comes out after blowing up the board. Um, and yeah, and then you have Sonic for a spell and trap negate. Overall, like that hand was really good as well. It, domain is just weak to like Ash Blossom, and you really want to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, and then on the crackback, you have the Tyranno, which is just absolutely domination. But yeah, that is it for the Dynamorphia deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.